Morning. Uh, today I'll be showing rendering uh, X particles in Cinema 40 using Octane Render. Octane is a unbiased um, GPU uh, rendering engine, and it's on multiple 3D platforms: Maya, Max, Blender, Cinema 40. Um, I'll show you some examples of. Um, some of the uses we've used um, X particles in Octane. So does anybody use Octane Render in here? <laughs> All right, so, okay, awesome, <laughs> sounds good. Um, I'm gonna start off opening um, one of these scenes just to show what Octane Render is. So not, the basic interface is pretty similar. You just you have your regular C40 interface, and then you have a live viewer, which is a real-time um, interactive viewer. Um, with Octane, uh, all the render settings is, are based off kind of real-world-ish settings. So the global illumination and uh, how light reacts with the uh, materials is um, baked into the render engine. So hit the, um, to send, this one to send the scene to um, Octane, and it'll just start rendering based um, your scene. And if I decide to, let's see, let me do. Let's see, my camera. I can zoom in. All the depth of field is um, live, and you can change your focal length. Everything updates pretty quickly. Um, so things that take a long time to render, like subsurface, transparency, refraction, take um, very little time to get like a pretty close to final look, and it's a quick way to work um, to get the look that you want. So I'm going to pause this, and in this scene I have um, X particles being emitted from the surface of the cell. Um, do you guys use X particles? Anybody? Yeah, X particles. X particles is a powerful uh, particle system. Um, Plug in for Cinema 4D. It allows you to have um, incredible control about of where your uh, particles are emitted, some dynamics, um, where you don't want them to go, where you want them to go. And with Octane, you can render them using um, instances of geometry pretty quickly. So all of these little spheres are going to be rendered using um, actual spheres that oh, I hit the wrong button. How do I get rid of this? Here we go. Focus. Um and the way to do this is on the X particle emitter, you add an octane tag. And within the drop down particle rendering, you enable geometry. 
you just select your, your object that you have. So I have a particle object, which is a sphere, and I applied a um, octane material to it. And that'll render these individual particles in my particle system as actual geometry, which is, you know, something that I've always wanted to do and have it actually look good and not terrible <laughs> has been a struggle. Um, so I'm going to open up another file. This is a pretty simple scene. It just has a few lights and a cell. Let's shoot to a live viewer. And it's got like you know, a cell with a glowy nucleus. If I decide to move around, take a look. Let's set the camera to focus on this object and make it a little easier. But I, mean, I could kind of play the live viewer to show what I'm going for. I'm going to set this up. Um, right now, I have particles being emitted that are emitting light. Um, so if you look at the surface of the cell, you can see it lighting the surface of the cell as it comes out. So this is a technique that we use to show like you know, some kind of cytokine release or some type of um, particles from a cell. So typically, um, starting off octane uh, X particle system, I'm just going to delete this X particle system, create a new one. I'm going to turn off the live viewer for now. You select a XP system. You have XP emitter within the XP emitter. You can tell it to admit either from a classic rectangle, you can let, emit it from an object. So I'm going to select um, my object, which is the sphere. Um, sorry to name things. Uh, I'm going to emit from polygon area, so it's going to emit from all over the, the cell. Right now it's just spraying particles everywhere. Not really what I want. Um, so I'm going to add some control to this. So within the modifiers, I'm going to select a motion modifier. And I'm going to do a XP turbulence. I'm going to set the noise type to curl. And this should give it a little bit of a nicer motion. It seems a little too frequent to me. So I'm going to drop that down a little bit and get some nicer motion. Um, maybe increase the scale a little bit. It's starting to look kind of interesting. Um, okay, so I want don't want these particles to go back into the cell, so I'm going to, in the motion modifiers, I'm going to add a, a void. I'm going to have it avoid the cell. And now we have particles exiting, doing some fun, turbulent motion. Um, so we're definitely getting there. In the emitter, I uh, kind of wanted just to be a burst, so I can keep it on rate, birth rate, eh, it's all right. Emit all frames. Instead of emitting all frames, I'm going to do 15 frames, and let's bump this up to 2,000. Eh, maybe a little bit more. Let's go crazy. Um, at this point, uh, if you hit the live button, you don't see anything happen um, because we haven't uh, told it to um, render anything in Octane. So right click on your emitter, go to Octane, select Object Tag, and enable Particle Rendering to Geometry. 
that I don't want to keep. I'm going to just make a sphere. Let's set this down to 12. Um, the costahedron's cool. I'll set this to 0.5. And let's see if anything's going to happen. So default has just spheres. And um, once you drop in your geometry, it's going to snap to whatever you put in there. So right now, those spheres are looking a little big. I'm going to drop it down a little bit. So, you know, if you want to take a look at it from different angles, zoom in. All the rendering is done real time. All the depth of field is real time. Um, this is all running off the laptop. I'm not, you know, screen sharing to a computer elsewhere. Um, I'm going to create a glowy material for this. I'm going to go to my shaders. You use my Octane shaders, Octane materials. And within the materials, um, diffuse material, there's an emission tab. You select a black body emission, which is does kind of um, scientifically, it's like if you heated up a piece of metal, it would emit, emit light at a certain wavelength. If you um, raise the temperature up and made it hotter and hotter, it would change this kind of the color. Um, so use the black body emission, it's probably too bright. Drop it down, this is rendering. Oh uh, yeah, it's, drop it onto my sphere. It's crazy bright. Um, do a surface brightness, a little bit more control. Um, and give it a color. Change the color. And all the, this kind of um, layout is pretty consistent with the classical um, Cinema 40 um, layout. But if you wanted to go into Node Editor, there's an Octane Node Editor. And you can use the node editor to build your material. Um, and this kind of bloom that I have is part of the, the camera settings. And it's a post-processing effect, so you need to adjust like the bloom intensity. Um, so there's that. <laughs> um, Another thing I like to do is possibly give it um, a little bit of motion blur. We can see if this works. Um, just render a few frames. Sure. I'm just going to render this in low resolution. You start to see the the particles have motion blur to them. Um, these are all based on camera settings, like um, the shutter um, time. And for some animations with um, particle or even stills, it's nice to give like the the particles a directionality where they're going. All right, let's close this. So I'm going to show something else. Actually, let me just use this file. All right, let's turn off the camera. Um, so say you want to add some trails to these um, particles. Um, one way you could do it is within the generator, you need to choose XP trail. And in order to render the XP trail with um, Octane Render, you add, uh, you use the hair module. So simulate 
hair object add hair. Um, I'm going to turn this off for now and just kind of show the paths that are being drawn out. Uh, is it not doing it? Yeah, I have to select my emitter. Uh, drop in the emitter that you want to use. And now it's going to draw out all these hairs. I'm going to turn off my emission from lights and select my hair object, turn it on. And now it's going to create guide hairs. Um, no, not yet. I have to set it to guide. Uh, set the root to spline guides. Now it's going to create hair along each of those splines. Um, and that's being controlled um, by the hair, hair material in Cinema 40. So I'm just going to throw this white material on the hair object and render. So all these individual hairs are going to be rendered using the material. Um, you can go take a look at it up close. Um, I decided to, oh, I, I want to make those ends, those particles glowy again. Turn that on. Just turn down the brightness. Um, oh, I put the, yeah, I put the glowy material on the hair. That's why that's happening. Um, put that on the hair. Um, say, all right, this, you know, hair is all fun and cool and stuff, but I want to do something, um, maybe make them glass. So select the material, select the specular material, and now it's, all the hairs are transparent with refraction and all that fun stuff. Um, maybe make it a little cloudy, blurry. And something like this would probably take forever to get an idea of in the traditional renderer um, or might not render for days and you get a pretty good idea even on a laptop of what uh, your object's going to look like. Um, so I'm going to close this. I think I'm about out of time. That's, that's all I got. <laughs>